is Find Your Dream Job, the podcast that helps you get hired, have the career you want, and make a difference in life. I'm your host, Mac Pritchard. I'm also the founder of Max List. It's a job board in the Pacific Northwest that helps you find a fulfilling career. Every Wednesday, I talk to a different expert about the tools you need to find the work you want. Find Your Dream Job is brought to you by Top Resume. Top Resume offers expert career advice that can help you stand out in a crowded market. Get a free review of your resume today. Go to maxlist.org slash top resume. If you're doing your job search right, you're networking all the time. But what happens to those contacts when you're not looking for work? Lauren Francis is here to talk about why you always need to nurture your network and how to do it. Lauren is the president and founder of Mulberry Talent Partners. It's a professional staffing, recruiting, and executive search firm. She's helped thousands of of people find careers and jobs. Lauren joins us today from Portland, Oregon. Lauren, let's get started uh, and let's talk about networking. Many of us struggle not just with nurturing a network, but networking itself. Why do you think this is so? Well, can I start with a question for you, Mac? Uh, how many times have you heard from candidates networking? I just despise networking. I hear it all the time. Maybe the word isn't as strong as despise, but people tell me they're uncomfortable with it. And I bet you hear that a lot too, don't you, Lauren? I do. And, you know, when I, when I was preparing for this, this um, call with you or this uh, interview or conversation, I should say, uh, I, I actually looked up the definition and it is the compound of two nouns, net and work. And I think now I know why it's unpopular because it, it's perceived as work to network. And so, you know, networking is in its simplest form is really the cultivation of productive relationships for employment or business. Um, I think it's more than that in, in the personal realm, but that's basically putting it um, simply. Yeah. And, you know, the way, I, the way I view it is that we are, I mean, to think of it differently, we are connecting and building relationships. It's really that simple. I'm so glad you brought up that definition because... Um Work is certainly part of networking, and I do meet people who are hard workers with a mm -hmm. terrific work ethic who are still uncomfortable with networking. What, what do you think is going on there, Lauren? Uh, I think people have, are uncomfortable sort of showing themselves. I think that they have a uh, discomfort with um, maybe asking for things or they're thinking they're uh, trying to get something from someone as opposed to... I'm just having a conversation. I'm, we're having a cup of coffee uh, and we're, we're getting to know each other. And I, I think a lot of people, when they reach out for networking, for example, let's say on LinkedIn, uh, many times I'll receive a LinkedIn request and I look at the, at the person's profile and I'm thinking, that person, why aren't they asking me for something? Why aren't they asking me to connect? They're asking me to connect on LinkedIn, but they're not using the opportunity that LinkedIn provides to craft a personal message. Well, let's paint a picture of what good networkers do. And you mentioned relationships, but uh, in addition to making an ask, what, what are the things that you see good networkers do consistently? Uh, well, I think there's, you know, this is when we were seeing each other uh, at, not say, networking events, for example, or different um, types of, uh, let's say, conferences and that sort of thing. Uh, you know, I kind of define it as show up, study up, follow up. And showing up can be on Zoom, right? Uh, and I think taking the time to establish a connection and to, uh, and to reach out well, basically taking the time to establish a connection and, and, and engaging with someone. And I think showing, and, and it's, it's important to, to be a good listener. A lot of people come into, let's say networking or, or relationship building with an agenda. And I think there's some of that, sure. Uh, but, and also showing up can be asking for 20 minutes to schedule a Zoom call or coffee or that kind of thing. Study up is to be really clear about the objective. Let's say if you're setting up a Zoom call, it, this is kind of what's happening now is we're, 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 I'm sort of relating it to the moment we're in um, and take time to research the individual and also follow up, nurture the connection by showing gratitude, uh, maybe writing, when writing a quick thank you. 
it's important to include something that you learn from the conversation or something that you found valuable for, from, from that um, time together. I really like the, that formula that you've shared here, uh, show up, study up, follow up. And as you describe each of those steps, it sounds very much like a typical business meeting, doesn't it, Lauren? Oh, yeah, certainly. And it is, you know, I, I think one of the things that I've, I've shared with people uh, is to really start somewhere. If it's you reach out to one person a day or one person a week, it, it really doesn't matter. It, it matters that you start and you start to uh, sort of um, build that practice for yourself and get comfortable feeling uncomfortable because it will get easier and you will feel more connected. And let's talk about nurturing a network. What do you have in mind when you say that, Lauren? Nurturing a network is, is, is basically being in touch. Uh, and everyone is always, I often hear, you know, I don't have time for that. <laughs> At the same time, if you make time for it, you actually do have time. And nurturing a network is to uh, connect with people. You know, I hear from candidates, um, you know, when they're looking for a position and, but there are many candidates that stay in touch with me throughout the, the positions, let's say we place them in, or they ended up, you know, finding a, a, a great job without our assistance. And, and, and so, and they value the relationship. It, sh it shows me that they value me and they value our connection. And the candidates that do stay in touch when they're not looking for work, what do they do? How do they reach out to you? Uh, usually they'll, they'll respond to something I post on LinkedIn or they'll join one of our webinars. Uh, they will refer me to someone. They might ask me to help them with a, they might have joined an, an, an organization and, and they might reach out to us to, to add us as a vendor, uh, our, our organization as a, as a staffing vendor, those kinds of things. So they're, 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 they're building more than they're building the business relationship and the, and the professional and the personal or professional relationship, I should say. You're a recruiter. So it seems natural that many people would want to stay in touch with you. What advice do you have for a listener who is trying to figure out who they should nurture in their network? How should they make those choices? Uh, recruiters seem like an obvious one, but what other uh, relationships should someone try to maintain as they nurture their net network? Uh, I think, you know, I think it depends on what you're focused on in terms of your career and the people that you want to be in touch with. If it's either uh, looking into an organization that you want to be uh, involved with and trying to make those connections, uh, you'll be surprised at how many people don't really think of a recruit, uh, connecting with a recruiter, that that's a valuable relationship. And I, that's one of the reasons why we had the webinar last week, uh, a week and a half ago, was to really talk about how, how important it is to have a good relationship with someone that's connected to work. And outside of your professional contacts, are there people in our networks that you recommend that we stay in touch with that can be helpful to us in a, either a job search or throughout our career? Well, I think oftentimes we have professional organizations, and in Portland in particular, there are a lot of uh, meetups and and lots of different organizations to join. and 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 I find it to be valuable for individuals to seek those out and to find something that resonates with them. They're not necessarily going to a networking event to network. They're going they're going to build relationships and create community. And at the same time, they're interested in what the organization does and why they're there. You mentioned earlier the example of connecting with people like yourself, recruiters and others online by commenting on LinkedIn posts or uh, occasionally reaching out via email. Mm -hmm. What are your suggestions, Lauren, uh, in nurturing a network for um, taking advantage of uh, meetups and conferences and other events, whether they happen in person or right now virtually online? Well, the, I think it's interesting online. It's, what, what's interesting about in-person events, which I love and I miss, and I look forward to, the, to when we can get back to that, yet I have found during this time that I have had more meaningful connections from getting on calls in a small group setting 
uh, a one-on-one -on -one individual because there aren't the distractions of, you know, food and beverage and people and, you know, the event itself, right? <laughs> and so I just found that I've created some incredible connections and partnerships through this time. And then in terms of um, the amount of time you recommend people spend nurturing networks, what does this look like in a typical week? Are you, you're not suggesting that people spend hours a day on this, but uh -huh. when you think about people who are effective at, at nurturing a network, how much time do they spend? It's hard to say. I would say that it's a combination of reaching out to individuals and to uh, attending events that are of interest and that, that meet your professional needs. And I would say, you know, there were so many. I mean, oftentimes you hear there's so many. I don't know which one to go to. or I don't know how to prioritize. Or sometimes they fall on the same day or evening. And so my, I was, I mean, I myself was attending I would say somewhere between four a month when we were all meeting in person. Uh, but I was also, it was really important to me to continue to support the organizations that I was a part of, that I am sure. a part of. Okay, terrific. Well, Lauren, I want to take a quick break. When we come back, I, I want to talk about the importance of reputation when nurturing a network. And I know you mentioned relationships as well, and I want to dig into that. Uh, so stay with us. Uh, when we return, we'll continue our conversation with Lauren Francis about how to nurture your network. Often when I meet job seekers, they ask me to look at their resume. I know a lot about resumes, and I'm happy to give my opinion. But I also encourage the people who ask my advice to talk to someone who writes resumes for a living. If you're looking for an expert to review your resume, our show sponsors can help. Go to maxlist.org slash top resume. In just two business days, you'll hear back from a professional writer at Top Resume, and you'll get personalized, actionable feedback. Go to maxlist.org slash top resume. It's free. You'll learn if your resume is well-organized and easy to follow. You'll find out if you're using the right format to highlight your achievements. And you'll get suggestions about how to best use a professional summary. Wouldn't you like to get help from an expert on these topics? Sign up today for your free resume review. Go to maxlist.org slash top resume. Now, let's get back to the show. back in the Maxlist studio. I'm talking with Lauren Francis. She's the president and founder of Mulberry Talent Partners. It's a professional staffing, recruiting, and executive search firm. Now, Lauren, before the break, we were talking about why you need to nurture your network, and you should be doing it now, just not just when you're looking for work. Um, and I want to talk about reputation and, and the role that reputation plays plays in nurturing your network. Give us your thoughts about that. Well, you know, it's interesting. The word reputation always brings me right back to high school, <laughs> that it was a popularity contest. And it's, it's, it, it's, it's really, it's your own popularity contest for yourself, if you will. Um, and, and in preparing for the podcast, again, I looked up the definition of reputation and, and I found one that I really liked. It is an indirect result of anything and everything we do. And really what, you know, how I see it, it's really a sum of all of your actions. And you, I, I don't think you can really talk about reputation with all, without also talking about relationships. And to me, relationships are, the cent are central to our lives. They are, I think true happiness comes from the quality of our relationships. And, and, and they include family, friends, business associates, coworkers, the airline attendant, the store clerk, the hotel housekeeper. It's, it's your relationships and your interactions. It's, it's the, making, and putting them first and making them important in your life. And often when we speak about networking, it's, uh, people think about it as in an intentional way. I have to build a connection with this person or get to know someone at that company. And what you're describing 
is something much broader. It's, it's how you carry yourself, not only in your career, in your profession, but through the world and, and how that can affect the relationships that uh, ultimately drive your career, isn't it? Well, truly, and I think, you know, I don't know if this is a good time to, to dive into personal branding, but you hear that term a lot, but really it is, it's how you show up, how you show up online, how you show up in the community and how you show up at work. And so, you know, I see it as your online self, your community and your work, um, you know, on your online self, it's your posts and the profiles on your profile and how the le- level of engagement um, are really a reflection of you and your personal brand. Uh, again, reputation, right? Uh, community, uh, you know, how you engage with your connections matter. Um, you know, and, you know, many of us have heard the, the quote, you never get a second chance to make a first impression. And in my view, Im- impression, impression and reputation are linked. Um, and then the quality of your work I mean, and, and, you know, from the first day to your last day, strive to do your best always and, and, um, and come to work with, with, um, you know, a generous, a generous heart and, uh, prepare, preparing to do your best work. And Lauren, what difference can reputation and relationships, uh, in your network make in your job search? Uh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll share a story, uh, a candidate that we recently placed, she'd moved uh, to Portland from out of state and I was able, we were able to secure a position for her quickly and uh, she came to Portland and she plugged in right away. Uh, first of all, she had very strong references from her former employers. And so again, that's about your reputation, what you did in the past and how it follows you. Uh, professional, she had a, a professional and engaged online presence, uh, thoughtful and warm communications, and also a sense of urgency when she responded to us. She would respond to us quickly with her, uh, with emails and, and get things that we had asked for her from her quickly. And so it showed an interest in, in, uh, in, in the process, really, uh, and a desire to join her professional community. community. And these qualities that she brought are important to us at Mulberry, and they're very important to employers. And how did they result from paying attention to her network? Why Talk more about the connection between the things that you saw when you were vetting this candidate and what she did throughout her career to, to nurture her network. You know, she, in terms of nurturing her network, it was interesting because in this particular case, she... As I mentioned, she had plugged into the community pretty pretty quickly, and I had uh, presented her to uh, a client. I said, you know, we just met someone really special, and she said, oh, I met her at a networking event, and that was she was new to the new to Portland, and so she had spent time early on building, starting to build her network here, and. And so, and, and, and everyone says Portland's a small town, and that is an example of how, how true that is. Aside from attending networking events, are there other common steps you see uh, people take, like this candidate that you worked with who had such a good reputation and good relationships for a newcomer, uh, common steps you see them take to nurture their network? Uh, I would say staying in touch and reaching out. I, I, I think what, one of the areas I see is that a lot of uh, candidates will call, will reach back out to me once they've secured a position or they, and, and they let me know, they, they stay in touch with me about their status, which I think is really important. Many times people uh, end up in a new role and then that I, I find out about it in other ways, which happens and it's fine, really. However, though, the people that actually reach back out to me really stand out. Yeah, I I would say that too. And I do a lot of informational interviews and I'm always impressed by the people who I meet. And then a month or two months later, I get an email or a card uh, and they say, hey, just want you to know I've uh, taken a position at this company. Mm -hmm. And when I get that message, I know I'm going to hear from that person again. But Mm -hmm. even more importantly, I know that they're going to be a leader in the community and in their profession. Do you have a similar reaction? 
Indeed. You know, and, and the other, and, and also when other, when candidates, you know, I know you've noticed this on LinkedIn too, when they thank, when they're leaving their position, they thank their coworkers and the organization and they're going to be miss. They're going to miss the organization that they're leaving. Uh, that's another. It's another way for people to let to update people and let them know, you know, what's happening for them in their life. And I, I think it's a lovely, lovely gesture. It is a lovely gesture, and it's exceptional. I would say I probably talk to seventy five hundred people in the course of a year, mm. and I might get three or four of those notes in the course of twelve months. So. A constant theme I hear, I bet you do too, Lauren, is people want to stand out from the crowd. And this is such a simple uh, but effective way of doing it, isn't it? It is. And, and showing gratitude is such a, is so important to me as part of our values as, as an organization. And it's part of how I live my life every day. And it means a lot to me. And, and like, I, you're right, I, I hear, I do receive those types of thank yous, um, not as often as I would like. And the, the people that do really stand out and they show their character, they show up really, really well. You mentioned gratitude and we've been talking about networking and, and nurturing a network. What, what, what part does service play in both growing and, and, and being part of a network, Lauren? In terms of service to... Helping others, not, not just uh, asking for help, but being of uh, a resource or being of service to others. Well, you know, I think it's important to be a charitable person and ch- ch- be showing gratitude, charitable, uh, giving back. Uh, that is a lot of what we're talking about here. They all go hand in hand. What kind of steps do you recommend someone take to, to give back? Uh, what are common things that you see people do? I think, again, I think it has to do with your interests. Uh, and and you, can, you can volunteer with the professional organization that you are associated with. You can also look at different uh, volunteer opportunities within your community and give back that way. I know a lot of organizations uh, make that possible for their employees to spend a certain number of hours per year or month uh, giving back. And, I, and, and it shows, it demonstrates your character and it demonstrates your, how, you, how you care for people. Just like to bring it back to how we take care of, how we, tr- how we treat the store clerk or the hotel housekeeper um, and, and see them and, and show, that, show that gratitude somehow. We've been talking about networking throughout your career. And as people grow in a profession, they're going to get more and more requests for informational interviews. Do you recommend, Lauren, that uh, someone always make time to, to see others if they get requests for uh, networking meetings? Absolutely. Are you, are you speaking about if I were to receive a, uh, an inquiry to yes. help someone along the way? Yeah, somebody who wants to uh, get together for 15 to 30 minutes to talk about their job search? Absolutely every single one. It's so important to me to give back. And, you know, we're in the business of helping people find jobs and find careers. And we want to do everything we can as an organization to support them along their journey. And that's why we spend a, a lot of time helping our candidates with their resumes and as part of the process. Um, interviewing, helping them position certain, maybe they had a tough, tough, tough departure from a company and trying to help them find the right words to, to share that. Um, we find that, that any way that we can help uh, candidates and particularly people that, that reach out to me specifically and they were referred by someone that I, I care about, I'm, I'm, I, I want to be there for them. What about a listener who's a middle manager or senior executive and and they're not in uh, the uh, career consulting business like you and and me uh, do would you still recommend that they make time for every informational interview request uh, it's I, I I would say that if they can either I guess it depends on how many interview requests they're getting but I, <laughs> I would I would say that I would I would have to say that they can maybe 
choose to choose to speak with as many people as they can, but also there might be others in their network or others in their organization that they can refer that individual to. Just some way to kind of you know, talk about the net and, and, and being supportive because they were there at one point in their career. And I think people sometimes forget about that. Yeah. I think that people like ourselves are, because of the work we do, we get a lot of requests. But my experience has been that most people don't hear very often uh, from others who want informational interviews. And I, I agree with you, for whatever your profession, you're going to have a much stronger and more effective network if you make time to talk to others. Well, I agree. It's been a terrific conversation. Tell our listeners, what's, what's next for you? Well, uh, Melbury has created a biweekly 30-minute job uh, workshop series. And you, Mac, were our first guest. Thank you so much. And you helped us launch. It was a pleasure. Thank you for having me. You bet. Uh, So every other week, we invite thought leaders to share their wisdom and expertise with our viewers. And um, the schedule of past and future shows can be found on our website at mulberrytalent.com. And join us uh, on Thursdays at noon. Well, terrific. I know people can learn more about that series by visiting mulberrytalent.com. And I do want to give it a shout out. I've seen the list of upcoming speakers and some of your more recent ones. Terrific uh, advice. And I love the fact that you limit it to just 30 minutes because there's so much content out there. Uh, It can be overwhelming sometimes. So, Lauren, given all the useful tips you shared today, what's the one thing you want a listener to remember about why you need to nurture your network now? Well, I would say it this way, Mac. Uh, Get off the sidelines and get into the arena. Get out there and set a goal for yourself. And one of my favorite quotes of all time is by Wayne Gretzky, you miss 100% of the shots that you never take. How well does your resume tell your career story? Find out today. Get your resume reviewed for free. Go to maxlist.org slash top resume. And if you like this show, sign up for our free weekly newsletter. You'll get all the resources mentioned and a transcript of the interview. Go to maxlist.org slash show notes. Again, that's maxlist.org slash show notes. Next week, our guest will be Marcus Carter. He's a senior recruiter at Instrument. It's a creative agency, engineering firm, and consultancy. Most employers say workplace diversity is a top priority. But how do you find the companies that actually attract and retain a diverse workforce? Marcus says it starts with candidates being their authentic selves. I hope you'll join us. Until next time, thanks for letting us help you find your dream job.